thank you for inviting me. I'm happy to give a talk today. And um, I think some of you or most of you remember that uh, two years ago, I gave a little introduction in the camera system we were using. And today is kind of a follow-up on that. So I'm going to tell you about how we use this motion capture system to analyze the courtship display of our mannequins. And so first, just a little introduction. Um, why is this motion capture of courtship important or why are we doing this? So most of you know, one of, most of the unique and complex behaviors evolve through sexual selection, such as the dance of birds of paradise or peacock spiders. And of course, also our mannequins. And we know these displays are essential for reproduction and female choice, or in some cases, male choice but often they are very difficult to investigate because the movements are very rapid or the animals are really small. And so, of course, this brings some difficulties, but we still want to know uh, what's behind these behaviors, how they evolve to, uh, to do that. Of course, we need some technology and um, video recordings became crucial in understanding the animal behavior in all aspects because we can replay them, different people can look at the same recordings, so that's always been a part. And then in the last years, we had the high-speed recordings, and that already gave us an amazing insight in what animals can do, particularly if we think about mannequins, their crazy flips and dances, and then we can do a slow-motion analysis to be able to actually watch that. And so, uh, one of, another big milestone was uh, the usage of motion capture systems that are really uh, great in understanding animal behavior and also biomechanics. And they can be used in 2D and 3D to have more of the spatial information. And um, these systems by now work really well, particularly in uh, experimental setups and lab conditions. Uh, for example, people build flight arenas, so uh, you have a better background to see the animals better, or in most cases, they put markers on the animals or humans, depending, and uh, track these markers. But in the field, this is really challenging sometimes because we cannot use markers always, we cannot control for a background or light conditions. So. And with increasing um, video technology, of course, there came also this uh, part we need to also advance our analysis and try to automatize this because now we have this super high frame rate sometimes or really good quality videos which are quite heavy and we take huge amount of data which would take forever to analyze. So also this analysis really became a really important part and had a lot of advancement in the last years. And um, so in my case, I studied the golden colored mannequins. I guess most of you know them. Um, you see the males have this uh, great golden beard and they live in the forest in Panama. I studied them in Panama. And um, already in 2007, my professor, Leonida, uh, was able to record them in high speed and describe their chomp snap display where they could see that, okay, the males are chomping and they do this flip at the end and the females are flying. So there are differences in the movements. And then in my last study, I found that, or we found that their behavior sometimes shows a very stereotype motor sequence pattern. So they really adapt their movements to their spatial surroundings and their saplings. And um, of course, then we were thinking, so this uh, spatial information must be crucial for these males' uh, performance. And also maybe this is a really important information for the females. So not just the males, also maybe females evaluate more than just uh, certain parts of the dance. And uh, so uh, just to give you a quick reminder of that is what their display looks like for those that haven't seen them <laughs> already so often, um, I hope you can hear it. Okay. 
hope that worked. Maybe not so loud, but at least a little bit. So you could see the males doing their own wing snaps while jumping. There was even a female joining the male in the arena doing the dance with him. And um, yes, yeah, so for us, why we came up with this method and what we, why are we doing this is we want to un understand um, how sexual selection operates on these displays. And particularly, we want to describe aspects and features uh, of the display that vary between the individuals. So in the golden colored mannequins, um, the reproductive success is really skewed. So we have many males within a leg, but only one male gets most of the matings. And so we want to understand what's so particular about his movement. And with this new method, we're hoping that um, we can find even new uh, features in the display that we can analyze and also uh, which components of course the females evaluate in the display and at the end once we can put all our uh, results together understand if there might be even a concept that the female evaluates not just a single part but many parts together and so just to uh, so you can remember what my camera system looks like so we had these three cameras that were connected to this computer and a synchronizer. They are high-speed cameras. We recorded um, with 60 frames per second, which is not crazy high, um, but for the purpose that we wanted to use it, that was sufficient. And also like this, we could, of course, uh, record more data at a time. And then uh, this is what it looked like in the field. So we camouflaged everything. We put up the cameras and the system around the arena so we didn't disturb the animals too much. So we still had a good view, but not like disturbing them. And um, we ran calibrations, of course, to get a 3D space. So we had a 2D calibration to understand, to get the parameters for focal length and lens distortion and then the extrinsic calibration uh, to understand the position of the cameras to each other. And we added a third calibration to get the absolute position of the arena in the space so that we really know how it is rotated, um, which was a really important part actually for our further analysis. And uh, of course, once we had all these things put together, we had to analyze all the recordings of the males and doing that manually would have taken a really, really long time. So we, we invested the time in um, training a deep learning algorithm. So first we did some manual annotations um, and developed this software together with a company called Loopio. So this was like a back and forth. And uh, we used a method for post estimation and after a while, our program learned to identify the bird, even in our videos where sometimes the light or the background were really difficult, but um, by now it worked really well. And the best part about it is we didn't need any markers to track the birds, which could have led to some disturbance or maybe impact the female choice. So that was great. And so this is what it um, looks like. So you have the three videos from all three perspectives of my cameras. And I hope you can see that around the bird, there is a little red box. So this is the box that tracks my bird. There is no uh, audio in this video, but you can see that it really follows the bird in each video through all the chumps. So that is really awesome. So we don't need to do this manually because it would take really a lot of time. And so yeah, once you have these uh, automated annotated videos and you put everything together, of course, of course you get a lot of noise. So we needed to start with data cleaning because of course the computer really computes. So it doesn't follow anything that we actually see. And uh, first, we, we started by removing some frames uh, that had a displacement of precisely zero, which means that uh, the, the model, the deep learning, kind of lost the bird and it just kept the frame from before. So uh, it means that the bird stayed on the same space and didn't move forward 
for the computer. So we had to remove that uh, to get to delete some errors. And also we removed some points that had unreasonable high speeds. So you would see the tracking of the bird and then there is a dog outside of the arena, which can be a leaf that got tracked from all three uh, positions or yeah, just some error. Um, this we did by looking at some histograms to and like uh, we found a threshold that work, works really well that doesn't exclude too many dots, but those that are really not fitting. And I need to get out of my presentation. I hope everything keeps working. I just want to show you. So there is, um, we made a plot of how this looks like. So this is what we actually get out once we have all this stuff put together. And you see like the involvement from the jump, so the back goes back and forth, and then jumps to the next sapling, and from there back to another one, and then back to the ground, and then back up. So this is actually what, oh, I'm sorry. This is what the results in the end looks like. So that's pretty nice. So I can see how my bird jumped in his arena. Um, can you still see me? Yes. Um, okay, so yeah, this is what we had in the outcome. And once we had this, uh, we started to uh, extract the trajectories of the jumps. So um, first, we also had to set a speed threshold. So when the bird is resting on a perch, so the landing point in between to get the saplings between the jumps. And this was set to 0 0.6 meters per second because it's never precisely zero uh, as the deep learning algorithm uh, creates several boxes around the bird and then puts them from all three cameras together. And of course, there's always a bit of a movement between one frame and the other. So, but we found that this uh, was a, like a perfect threshold for assigning our saplings, uh, which we also use uh, k-means clustering, which is also completely automated, but worked very well. And um, then once we had our trajectories, uh, we projected them in a 2D plane. So it's like cutting a slice through the chump. So we follow them and then we have uh, the jump always from once. So we have also the sapling IDs. We know exactly from where to where the bird is jumping and how. And um, first of all, of course, we were like, we should evaluate our method just to be sure that this is not just, um, yeah. So we started comparing a completely manual and automated videos. So I did some uh, manual annotations and completed the whole process and then automated to compare them, the same video. And uh, for the trajectories, we fitted uh, parabolas uh, because they really resemble a ballistic curve, a ballistic projectile motion. So that worked also really good. And to evaluate this, we even calculated a goodness of fit, which lies between 0 0.9 and 1, so very high. And then to understand if manual and automated were really like comparable, uh, we correlated them. And it looks like this. So you see on this side, we have the manual annotated data. Do you see my mouse? Yes, cool. So the manual annotated data and then the automatically annotated data. And these are the chumps you see from sapling two to three, from three to two. And they really look very similar. I mean, this is also a very nice example. Not all of them are as good. Um, and if you look at the correlation coefficients, they're really high. So these chumps really work very well. And um, this is just uh, another graph to show these are defeated parabolas. So here you see the the actual annotated dots with the fit the parabola and this is just a parabola comparing also automated and manual and they're really high. Um, then our next step was okay first we want to understand if there is some difference within one individual uh, so we compared chumps of one subject across several displays 
And um, so always the same jumps from the same saplings, but across different displays. And uh, because that could also help to understand um, how many data do I really need to collect to be able to analyze this. And uh, as you can see, they're also quite similar. Uh, then uh, we looked at uh, the takeoff velocity. So just to give you a heads up, for this, uh, uh, for this study now, or for this preliminary study, we used uh, two males and of one male 11 displays and from the other 12. So quite a big sample size of displays because we wanted to see how much they vary. And then we added also a couple of females because we really want to see how different females actually move from the males. And um, so here is the takeoff velocity. So when they leave the sapling and just to understand the graph, you see the jump index is scaled from zero to one. So we did that because not all displays have the same amount of jumps. Um, so we scaled it like that. So zero is always the first jump, one is always the last jump. And we introduced also this value, which uh, models if there is any difference in between like the first and the last jump. So if there is a change over this time. And actually, in the velocity, we found that the, the jump index, so which jump of the display, it was actually played a role, and they got slower. So from the beginning to the display to the end of the display, their jumps got a bit slower. Um, so yeah, blue are the males, red the females. Then we looked at the takeoff height, um, so where they start. And that was actually a really good uh, example also. So here we also have the two males and the females. And they are significantly different. The females always start, are higher up in the arena. And this is also what we observe actually in our uh, videos. So that really also evaluates that all the method that we're doing is really good. Um, then we used uh, we looked at the angle of jumps, so how they leave the the sapling, because actually the way they leave it can uh, predict where the landing point would be, and wanted to see if they are very similar or if they vary, and um, there we couldn't find any significant results, which means they are kind of the same. There's not that much variation, so they seem to jump very similarly, and. So uh, also from our velocity, we could then uh, calculate the acceleration. And we, here we made an average, uh, which lies around 100 meters per second. So they're quite fast. And the force that an average mannequin of 18 gram needs is 1.8 Newton. So to compare that while they're standing on a branch is 0 0.167 Newton. So they really have quite a lot of force when they jump off. And another parameter that we included is the linearity, which would be the straight line between the two saplings and the actual curve of the jump that they do. Um, this also takes out different lengths of saplings that uh, some have in their arenas. And 94% lie between 0 0.8 and 1. So they, they are very similar across these displays. Um, yeah, so to conclude, uh, we have little variation, particularly within one subject, which is good for me. So I know for my, my follow up, I don't need such a huge amount of displays to analyze. Uh, also because sometimes it's just difficult to get them. And the males really resemble a ballistic curve, a ballistic projectile, so that was really cool. And I am, so we saw in some preliminary analysis already that there are sex difference between males and females. And I was thinking in, in the future, and I would like to add also some juvenile videos that it could actually show that females just move different than the males. And I have one juvenile video where I actually could see that he's rather chomping than flying, even though he's green. So that would be really interesting to see. Um, so the next step will be that I add more males. I want to see the difference between the males 
particularly the successful and the unsuccessful males because I'm now the two males that I used are were two successful males so they were quite good but I'm hoping to adding some of the other males will uh, give us really nice results and uh, also I would like to see some uh, videos where the female is present and compare them with the movements of the males where the females are absent so if they adapt a bit more to the females or yeah how this changes and with this i would like to thank you for your attention and i'm ready to take questions